To understand exposure, we have to understand something about light. We have to understand how light falls, how values are controlled. When you know the sun comes up and it's low on the horizon, when it gets higher in the horizon, the way shadows change, the way that changes our perception of the scene. You know, I sit here right now, and, and if I hold my hand out, we got all this sunlight from right up here falling right here on my hand. Okay, so there's a value to this. The opposite side is now in shadow. There's a value to that. There's a ratio going on there. This side is far lighter. It's probably four or five stops lighter than this side is. Now, on the outset, we say, okay, who cares? Big deal. So it's, it's lighter on one side than the other. But that one thing, this one thing of holding your hand up and, and looking at this is more powerful than we realize. And I do this all the time to help myself mentally in here visualize and understand what's happening with that light. Because if, if I understand the shadow and how it's falling, I can think about, okay, here's the light. You know, it, it's going to be up in a few minutes. It's going to be down in a few minutes. Maybe the sun's setting. Right now, the sun's coming up. So the higher it gets out here, the more desert-like, the more harsh, the more the shadows in the pockets. So if I was doing a portrait, I'm, I'm getting into an area where it's not my most ideal light. You know, I might want to use different lighting. I may want to use some artificial lighting and compensate that. If I'm doing a landscape, oftentimes I'll, I'll look at this higher light and say, well, it's getting too harsh. It's really hard to photograph an area like this because everything is so evenly illuminated that there's kind of a lack of, of shadow and subtlety. Okay, so oftentimes, you know, as photographers, we tend to put our cameras away when, when the noonday sun comes up. And, and there's reason for that. There's merit to that. That's not say you can't go out and, and make a good image. But we need to think about the light, the values, and, and why they're working the way they are understand what's happening. As this sun falls up or down, the shadows are going to get longer, things are going to change, the, the colors are going to get softer, the perceptions are going to change in the image. This muddy little lake, you know, doesn't look like much in this light, to be quite frank. That doesn't mean there's not a good photo here. But you look at it and it's kind of like, okay, this is a mud hole. And yet, you know, here is where I photograph Sliver Moon Blues. You know, I've, I've got an image in my gallery that's, that's one of my favorites, that's one of uh, my top images that, that was in the PPA General Collection when I entered it in competition of, of the moon setting over here and, and it completely changed the perception because the light was different, the exposure was different. So while the exposure side and the amount of light falling is essentially an absolute, you know, we can meter that and we can say, yes, here's the light, this is what it is. But the artistic side, the combining that with making an image work visually is, here's what the light is, what should it be? What am I trying to photograph? What's the subject? And how does the light make that subject feel to the viewer? And is that right? Is that what I'm trying to convey? And if not, then you have to change something. You have to change your image. You have to change what you're photographing. You have to come back later. You have to understand your light well enough to adjust. And that's one of the challenges of being a photographer. Understanding the science of exposure won't make you a photographer. But trying to be a photographer without understanding the science of exposure and light is going to have you uncertain all the time. It's going to have you constantly tripping and, and in that position where I hope this works. When you understand exposure properly, you don't, you don't hope the exposure works. You know, the exposure works because you did it right. You understand what's going on. It works. The question is, did, did your vision work? You know, did your visualization work? Did what you want to photograph work? Now you're crossing over into the art, artistic sides, which we will take time to look at another time, that are a bit more challenging to define, no less important. But if we understand the science of light and combine that with our perceptions, it's going to help us make great images. There's a jet over there. We're at White Sands, and uh, we're camped out here on this uh, little patch of desert. And these jets, sometimes the, the sonic booms go off as, as they're going, and the whole trailer just shakes. It's like, whoa, somebody just, just nuked this, you know? It's, it's, it's really crazy. If you're trying to record a video, it's incredibly annoying because you'll be there, and it's this, this whirring. All of a sudden, it's there, and then it's gone, and it's there, and then it's gone. And it's interesting and super annoying.